K Coke, welcome to Vlad TV. Respect, bro. Yo, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, I had to look it up so I got the right date. But you're actually the first rapper from the UK to get a video featured on Vlad TV. This was in January of 2011. Yeah, that's early still. Yeah. What January? Yeah. I just signed. I just signed the deal. That's right. It was it was off that deal with Rock Nation, and uh, you dropped "Are You Alone," and uh, you know I I got it right away. Like when I when I heard the song and I saw the imaging, I'm like, okay, I see what Jay Z's up to with this. Okay, <laughs> you know, congratulations though, man. You're definitely one of the OGs in this. Nah, for sure. Respect. I appreciate that, man. No doubt. So you grew up in Northwest London. Yeah, Stonebridge. Stonebridge. Tell me a little bit about Stonebridge, because Stonebridge kind of has an interesting reputation. What, what do you want me to tell you exactly? Like, Well, I mean, it's considered one of the rougher areas in London. Yeah, Why is that? for sure. Um, yeah, I, I believe it was that growing up. For sure. Okay. And what makes that area so rough? Is it is it the economic it, situation around it? I, um, to be fair, I just, it, was, it was the way, I think personally, the way it was built. The, the flats, the way it looked, I think um, there was a lot of stuff that happened there. Police couldn't really go through there. It was, just, it was just one of those places you just couldn't go. What do you mean by police couldn't really go through there? Because, like, the way, the, the, way the, the whole estate was set up, like, you used to have all these blocks that connected to each other. And, like, it was just, like, police couldn't really get to nobody. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's just about every block connected to every block. So I could literally walk from from one side of the estate to the other side of the estate without touching the floor, just going through the blocks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It used to be one now, of those kind of joints. Now, I mean, you talked about you had a, an interview with uh, with the standard. Yeah. And you said you, you've been shot at a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how old were you when you first got shot at? Bro, probably about 15, 16. Okay. And, you know, what a lot of people may not realize in the U.S. is that there is no right to bear arms in the U.K. No, no, no. It's all illegal over here. It's completely, it's completely legal. Yeah, completely. So the fact that you have a gun at all already means that you're, you're facing all types of you know, Charges, jail time. of course, yeah. Okay. So you were shot at... A bunch of times. Now, your brother got shot. Yeah. Uh, how, old, how old were you when that actually happened? Um, I think I might have been, what, 20? Maybe 21? My brother's 10 months younger than me. He was probably like 20. Okay. We were standing up together on the side of the road. We, we both got shot at. He just ended up getting one out of it, you know? Oh, so both of you were shot at and yeah, but he, he actually hit. got hit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, where did he get hit? Um, it's just like in his leg, like lower, upper leg still. It's still the bullet still lodged in him now. They couldn't take it wow. out. Okay. So, was that the first time you actually saw someone get shot in front of you? Nah, nah, nah. Okay, so, so you're, you're almost used to this. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Then your little cousin gets murdered. Yeah, that's that, that went too long ago though, to be fair. Were you talking about my little cousin that got stabbed? Stabbed I think to death? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't too long ago. That was like a, what, five years ago now? Yeah. Okay. He got he got he basically got stabbed to death. His dad was trying to save him and ended up getting stabbed in the process too. And obviously the dad came through and the son didn't make it, you know. I mean, growing up in an environment like this. Yeah. You know, you're talking about how your your cousin got, I mean, sorry, your brother gets shot right there next to you, but you've been witness to a bunch of other shootings. Yeah. Why why stay in this area when, when, you know, at any moment it could be your last day? Bro, it's not, it's not out of choice. <laughs> Man ain't there out of choice. Man's there because man's got nowhere else to go. It's only, it's only till man started doing certain things that, Man started when man was able to, do you get what I'm saying? But before that, man stuck there. We ain't got nowhere to, to go. Where are we going to go? Well, you could always move to another area. How? What area? How do we move? See, it's not as easy so as that. You can't just saying, get up and go. Okay. It's not as easy as that. So you're telling me that, that you're so broke that you have no choice but to stay in that area? Yeah, man was so broke that man had cho no choice but to stay there, for sure. It's sad. 
it, it's, it's sad life. being in that type of situation. Yeah, that's that's what it was growing up. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how it is in the UK, but yeah. but in America, I mean, even if you're on welfare, you know, and I have I have close close friends, you know, that, that have gone through this where. You know, you could even be on welfare in one area, but you could petition to move to a to a different area and still get on welfare. That's in true, area. still. But yeah, I'd rather be around the shit that I know than the shit I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you're like, saying that if you move into another area, it might actually be more dangerous of than course. where you are already. Yeah, of course. I, at least here, I know everybody here. I'm comfortable here. I know. I know what's going on here. If I move to a different area, it's probably the same shit. But I just don't know everybody there. So it's you get what I'm saying. Poor people can't. Poor people would have to move to another poor area. It's probably going to be the same circumstances in that area. So I'd rather be around the shit I know than the shit I don't know. You feel me? If that I makes understand. sense. Yeah. Now, before you started rapping, you know, you're talking about all these different situations. Have you gotten arrested before then? Yeah. Okay. A few times. Yeah, lots. Lots. What was the longest stretch that you actually did? Nah, I'm. I'm. What do you mean? The longest time I've done in jail? Yeah. Yeah, nah, I, I, I've I been jailed like four times, but nothing, like nothing for too long. Like the longest time I done was that attempted murder trial. Okay, and that came later on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so before you started rapping, you were getting arrested, but it was just in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so at what point did you say, okay, I'm going to start rapping and I'm going to start taking it serious? Um, Basically, we started, we started fucking around when we was like, I say about 21. Couple of my brethren from the estate started making songs, and I and I and and they would, it was just talking about man's life, and it was just fun, innit? So after I started doing that, and people started to like it, that's when I started to take it serious. Okay, and was your name K Coke in the beginning, or yeah, from did you the have start? Other it's been K Coke from the start. Okay, uh, why K Coke? Lots of reasons. <laughs> one, one come white, and I spit that. Another, because I was one of the only kids on the block that used to sell that. Okay. So you just came up with a K-Coke name. For sure. But based on those multiple reasons. For sure. Okay. 